Hey, quick one today. I'm just in the woods walking, Max. Last couple of days I woke up late and I was excited about doing some things early in the morning and I woke up late and when I wake up late it's like, oh no, missed opportunity. And I kind of like think, oh well I've messed it all up a little bit now. And So anyway, today I woke up a bit late and I thought, you know, rather than mope around and waste the day, I got up, got Maxi ready thought I'll take him out for a walk. Now, I, I could define the waking up late as, I could define it in a negative way and get down on myself and beat myself up, or I can define it as, okay, I've woken up late, maybe it's gonna reignite my fire because when I'm waking up late, the truth is I'm not motivated enough. When I've got my dream in focus and I can see it, I'm motivated to do it. Because I wake up early, I do my Qigong breathing. It's a beautiful time of the day when it's really peaceful to do some work so that you can experience the fruits of your labor. When you wake up early in the morning, birds are working, you know what I mean? Nature is working, they're putting in a shift. It doesn't mean that you necessarily, you see there's a lot of paradoxes in life. It's doing the work because it's who you, it's who you are. Doing the work because it's an expression of who you are. You know that you're wanting to shift, to experience uh, maybe something different, but you, it's a fine line between doing work because you feel like you need to become better, you need to become more because you're not enough as you are already. You're removing the stepping stone, that's something I got from Bashar. Okay, what am I talking about? Stepping stone. You, you are the next step on the ladder, you're right man, I'm just making a video for YouTube. No, no, but <laughs> You are the next step on the ladder to get to the next step. So don't remove the step by getting down on yourself and yeah, don't do that. I've been in jobs where it's like, I have to go to work. I wish I didn't have to wake up in the morning and go to work. You can flip that. You can, you can do that. You can say, oh, I have to do this. But when I thought about it, I thought, well, actually, I'm intelligently going to work to provide my, myself the means to keep the roof over my head. So... You don't have to do anything. You can choose not to go to work. Now, yes, there will be consequences of you choosing not to go to work. One of them being fired and maybe not being able to put food in your child's mouth. So I don't want that kind of a situation where I can't put food in my mouth. So I intelligently choose to go to work. What's the benefit of doing that? Well, I can say to myself, I wish I didn't have to go to work. You see, that way of thinking, it's, it's a certain attitude and it has a certain frequency that goes along with that dialogue, that inner dialogue. And this is why I encourage people to do breathing exercises, yoga, to turn down the volume on that inner dialogue. It keeps you in the moment and you're not feeling under pressure about what might happen in the future because you're living from the present moment you feel more grounded more centered you have more faith that you will be okay whatever happens you will face it you will cross those bridges when you come to it so the dialogue of i am intelligently choosing to organize myself to get a good night's sleep to hydrate my body to 
delve into breathing exercises, ox oxygenating the system so that the cells can function optimally. I'm intelligently intending to do that and I'm going to wake up in the morning, I'm going to go to work and I'm going to use my work as an evolutionary tool. I'm going to look people in the eye and I'm going to use my work situation to help me to grow as a person, to improve my communication skills with other people. That's what I did in the gym. Didn't really want to be there but I thought, you know what, I'm going to make the most of this situation, make the most of what I have today, I can go to work and you see how you do one thing is how you do everything. Your attitude at work will leak into other areas in your life so if you have an upbeat positive attitude at work it will leak into your other areas and when you get home from work you won't feel as drained anymore you'll feel a boost and it's like okay you're home from work from the job that you it's not really your passion then when you get home it's like this is my time now I can read on that subject that is I'm really passionate about and you'll find that you have more energy to take action on those things you can take a book to work with you when you get your break you take out your book when you do something even just a little you'll find that you have more of an ability to do it and doorways and options will start coming your way Another thing about being in a work environment, especially when you're taking in information regarding your higher self, creating your reality, and that kind of genre, spirituality, basically. And your other co-workers may not be into that kind of thing. Moreover, not only are they not into it, they detest you even talking about that kind of stuff. And you might be all happy and jolly. Some people will resent that because you're showing you, you're giving them a mirror, and it shows for them how far they have yet to go because they're not feeling that. They're feeling very low, depressed, and what have you. It might not even be low and depressed. It's just a very kind of subtle negativity, a kind of uh, not satisfied with the present moment and not knowing how to get out of that so you, you do maybe sometimes have to tone it down a little bit now I'm not suggesting that you put on a mask and don't be who you are you know still be authentic but around certain people you may need to give them their due a little bit because don't forget they're doing what they believe works best for them in the same way that you're doing what you believe best works for you so they are where where they are on the path and it's where they need to be for their journey for the experience that they've chose chosen to have so keep that in mind and you'll find that when you don't need them like I was saying in my last video when you don't need them to see it your way when you when you don't need them to have the lifestyle that you have watch what happens Eckhart Tolle, Tolle says allow them their unconsciousness because there are, there, are, there, <laughs> there are areas in our lives where we're unconscious where we need to raise our consciousness okay so allow and watch what happens they'll be asking you questions what's this about what's all this spiritual thing about isn't it just new age nonsense what's it about okay so they're going to be intrigued so allow they're doing their best their best might be really crappy but it's their best they're making the choices that they're capable of making with the level of consciousness they have access to yeah so I mentioned energy energy is very important because when you're manifesting, making a shift to a reality that you would prefer, it's consciousness and energy. So it's not just the visualization of what you're wanting to shift into. It's the energy to make that shift. How do I get energy? Personally, simple things like I've been talking about. I'm going to start sounding like a broken record, aren't I? But hydrating your body to the best of your capability like I said when you do something 
you find that you have more of a capability to do it than you had thought you had. So hydrating yourself, eating light foods, vegetables, a light diet, basic, basically looking after yourself. Exercise can help. Exercise is a great de-stressor. Whether you go to the gym for half an hour, an hour to stretch out your body, or there's plenty of yoga videos on YouTube right now doing stretches. I really encourage you to do it, to do that. One of the joys of life for me is putting something into motion, taking a course of action, and then noticing the changes, the changes in your body, the your skin, the quality of your hair, your eyes, when you look at yourself, the self-respect that you get from it, and that boost in confidence and self-esteem. Just more is possible. When you wake up in the morning, you want to get up. <laughs> it's like you want to be who you are fully to your full capacity you want to do it the more you do these things the harder it is not to do them the harder it is not to do them because you feel like something's missing you want to do your yoga you want to hydrate yourself you want to eat healthy you don't want the sugary stuff yeah you might have it as a treat don't mean you have to stick yourself in a prison. Now, the ego is very quick to stick up for your limitations. It's very quick to make you lazy. It's very quick to make excuses. Oh, I can't do that. Other people can do that, but I'm just this way. This is just how I am. Ego, ego will always stick up for your limitations. Be at war with your limitations, not at war with the outside world. And when you take on that battle with your own limitations, you take on your vices and your addictions and you slay them, watch what happens. Watch what happens to your mood. Watch what happens to your energy level. You know, sometimes I think that we give the controllers, we make them out to be more powerful than they actually are. These with a lot of videos. Now some of the videos out there, they are very informative and we need those people for when you're beginning this path. Naturally you want to find out, well why is the world why it is? Why is it so fucked up? But there are other videos that just make out these guys to be more powerful than they actually are. They're pathetic. What a pathetic way to conduct yourself. Creating war for profit and greed. What a pathetic way to conduct yourself as a conscious entity. Rise above them. You can do anything. You were created in the image of the creator. In the image, we were co-creators. We're co-creating with it. We weren't just put here. We've grown out of it to have an experience.